So the other day, I saw a video on YouTube. There's a guy who's doing uh, machining. Uh, he has a pneumatic spindle where he can easily swap bits by hand, no magazine. And I got some idea. That can also be done on Rapid Change ATC by just having a single pocket instead of complete magazine. Very simple, no sensor, nothing. So I contacted Don and convinced him to create one. And he agreed. So now we have this, a Rapid Chain Solo. No sensor, just a spring-loaded mechanical. And same mechanism as the Rapid Chain ATC. Uh, with this, I also created a plugins for NC Sender. It is, so to make it the installation much easier. But you don't need to use an NC Sender, the one I created to use this. I believe they will also release a macro specific for your controller or whatever sender you are using. Because this is basically a simple routine on G-Code command. As long as your controller can support some of those routine commands or macros, this should work. So let's start. Okay, on NC Sender, uh, we're gonna click the gear icon on the upper right screen. Then on the plugins tab, let's click the install plugin. Then you will see one of the, on the registry, there's a rapid chain solo. Click install. Done. And it's already enabled. Let's close this. And if we go to the plugins tab here, you'll start to see the Rapid Chain Solo. And let's click this. Then let's move the, let's first find our tool setter location coordinates. Let me actually lower that. So I'm gonna use my gamepad controller to jog it. Okay, I think we have the X, Y. So I'm just gonna, for the Z or your tool setter, the ideal height is whatever your longest bit, maybe add one inch uh, on the top of the TLS and probably that's your Z, Z height. And then once you have that location, all you need to do is click grab. And then this will populate the X, Y, Z. And then let's save it. Then the next step is let's find the location of the pocket. So let's just move up and then just eyeball it and then lower it. So while we're lowering it, we'll keep rotating the nut. And if you think it's not, it's gonna hit, just adjust the X and Y using 0.1 millimeter. So, so far it looks good. So keep rotating it. Looks good. Lower it down. You gotta feel the ball bearing engagement. Let's switch to one millimeter increment. Low, lower it up. Okay, it's not engaging anymore. I'm gonna do one millimeter increment. Touching, touching, and then maybe one more. Okay, that's good enough. And this point, we can again we're gonna click grab. And then by default the auto swap is off. We need to turn that on because I already turned installed this before, so that's why it's already on. And when we turn that on, it gives us a warning that 
auto swap because you can also use this plugin just for if you just care about the tool length sensor you don't care about the rapid change solo just turn this off but if you want to turn this on just read the warning that you understand what it does and let's say i understand and enable it and then confirm unload let's turn that off and then save that's it we're done so let's move it up we can do a quick test so on the screen all do you have a t1 t2 t3 T8, that's the number of your tools. You can also adjust that if you want to have more. You can have, actually, right now it's only eight. I might just need to adjust that. You can have as many as you want. I'll probably update to up to 99, but for now it's only eight. Because it's a virtual tool holder anyway, or magazine. So right now the machine thinks we're on T3 because it's highlighted compared to the other tools that's not highlighted. So we can unload it. Like if you if you hold click and hold the highlighted, it will unload it. If you click the one that's not highlighted, it will swap to that bit. Let's just do a swap. Yeah, again, it's unload, and then just take this up, and then I'll get another two tools. Sample this one, so I'm gonna swap it, and then I click continue long press okay it works so next step is we're gonna test run it let's load the real program. So on this demo, I'm gonna load a sample program that I've been using for my demo. This program has three tools to use. So we'll simulate it. I have uh, two tools on my hand and another one is already loaded. So that let's call this, I'm not sure that's a, that's a T3. And let's just say, I assume this is your T1 and this is your T2. Okay, now on the screen, I'll just simply, if you can see the screen, there's also an indicator of all the coloring of the uh, tool. So there are T1, like a little bit blue, T2 is uh, yellow, and T3. You can see, see on the side view, you can also do a spindle view. And you can actually also toggle the segments color for visibility. Before we start, we are, I think I also haven't measured my materials. For this demo, I'm just gonna use this sample block as my height. We're not gonna cut it, I'm still gonna cut on air. So I'm just gonna position it here. Let's say this is our material. I'm gonna jog using my gamepad again. And then the beauty of the wireless, I'm just gonna grab my TLS and use it as a Z probing. It's gonna lower it. All right, that's good enough. Then I'm gonna click the probe. I already set up my thickness for that uh, TLS as a, also as a Z probe. All you need to do is press this to enable because we are connection test is enabled. So and then start probe. All right, done. So we'll take, we'll put the TLS back in this cradle and then let's remove this material because we're not really cutting. We're just gonna cut in here. Actually, before I do that, let's test if the height is correct. So let's press the Z0, so I long press the Z0. There you go. Perfect, the height is correct. And let's start running the program. So before I start, I'm just gonna move the camera so you can clearly see. There you go. I think that's good enough. And let's play. 
Okay, it's gonna use a tool one because right now it's on tool three. So according to the screen it says confirm the correct tool is placed securely in the pocket. So okay, you're gonna take off our tool three and this is our tool one, we'll just put there and let's press continue. Long press. Oh, it's not visible. There we go. Okay, now we're switching to tool two. And okay, I'll take this out, put it here. And there we go. Click continue. Okay, now on, we're now on tool three. Okay, I'll take this out. And then let's put our tool three. And then press continue. And we're done. See how it easy it is and won't cost you that much. Not much fancy sensor wiring. The only advanced thing here is the wireless TLS. I believe this will cost less than $100 once this is released. With a TLS, you can buy this on Amazon. Or if you already have a TLS, you can just use that. Uh, in fact, uh, I kind of really like this, the, uh, the, the convenient, but the only thing I don't like about this is the latency. I cannot speed up uh, my purse uh, seek because of the latency. Else, if I put more than 150 millimeter per second or per minute, it will press really hard before it triggers the switch. So the only way to do to make this thing work is I really drastically slow down the first seek. Yeah. So there you go. I uh, hope this will make your workflow a lot easier and you, you can do a lot of uh, tool change because for me, that's that's the most hated part for me when doing a lot of, especially on aluminum. Before I really hate chamfering aluminum, now I really like it because it's so easy to swap bits.